Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is Alexander Sokol, and I come from a small European country called Latvia. In fact, the country is so small that it's much smaller than quite a few cities in India. Well, anyway, uh, I don't think it's going to be an obstacle in our uh, conversation with you. And uh, I mean a conversation because the part I'm especially interested in is the last part uh, when we're going to be talking to each other. And the reason for that uh, is that it's not going to be so much a talk in which I intend to share a particular piece of knowledge about trees or certain aspect of trees. Instead, I would like to invite you to reflect. The reason for that uh, is very simple. I think that this is one of the features of COVID-19 that uh, is obvious to quite a few people nowadays. A very large number of people were forced to stop and reflect on what is going on in their lives, what needs to change, what needs to be different. And this is something which doesn't happen very often. At the same time, in my opinion, this is something which is very useful. And when the organizers asked me to speak about this event, which I gladly agreed to do, I decided that it is this feature of COVID-19 I would like to, to speak about. Uh, in fact, it was not very clear to me from the very beginning uh, what I might be speaking about. And the reason for that is that my background is different from the background of most of my colleagues speaking at this event. My background is out of education. And when I talk at international conferences, I usually speak on various questions related to the field of education. And while education is something which is close to all of us because we've been to school and universities and our children go to school and universities, etc., etc., in fact, the professional background of most of you, I bet, is different from that of education. So it was not clear from the very beginning in what way my, my personal contribution could be useful. So uh, it took me a few days to decide. And what I came up with is uh, something which I call a framework for reflection. So what I would like to invite uh, us, rather than just you to do, is to reflect on uh, one aspect of Trees for X. And this is the aspect of collaboration. Because we have people like you, the audience, who've come to this conference because you are interested in something related to trees. On the other hand, you have people like us, those who call themselves trees experts, who believe that they have something to share. What can we do to make our collaboration successful, not to have false expectations, not to be disappointed, but actually to benefit as much as we could. This is something I would like to invite you to reflect upon. So if this sounds interesting, so let's get started. Okay, basically I think if we look at COVID-19 as a reason to reflect in relation of Trees for X conferences, there are two questions we would like to answer. So the first of them is what you are being offered under the label of trees. There are quite a few presentations here. There are quite a few different people coming from different countries, having different backgrounds, uh, different stories. Are we all speaking about the same thing? Are we all proposing the same thing? Is there any difference between what we are proposing at what we actually can propose. On the other hand, I think you as the audience are hardly homogeneous. There are quite a few different people, probably also coming, if not from different countries, then at least from different uh, regions of a very large country, 
having different backgrounds, are at different stages of your careers, having different interests, different motivations. So how can we be useful to each other? What I'm going to propose to you uh, is a kind of small framework, a small framework which I hope will help you define your interest related to trees, but the first thing, and as a th second thing, it will help you decide who you are talking to. So what kind of trees expert you are talking to and what kind of trees expert you might actually be interested in. Because my professional background, as I already told you, is that of education. So all my examples, or at least most of them, will be from the field of education. Okay, to sum up, by the end of this hour, uh, I hope we'll have a kind of tool that would help us decide what we're interested in related to trees and who we are talking to when it comes to those who call themselves trees experts. And uh, I'm going to be speaking about it uh, following a certain structure. So the tool I'm going to share will have four levels. And when describing each of the levels, I'll be speaking about four components. So the first one will be connected with wishes. The wishes of people who are interested in trees. What might they be? How different they might be? And what it actually affects? So the spectrum of wishes. The second group of things, so the second uh, interesting thing to discuss, are the group of trees experts. So what kind of people are talking about trees? What kind of people uh, are sharing something about trees? Are there any differences between them? Uh, what kind of differences we as the audience might be interested in? So that's something else uh, I intend to discuss during this hour. The examples from the field of education I spoke about, I call them four plus four. The reason for that is very simple. So uh, I'm going to give examples from the field of formal education, uh, the field which uh, I work professionally in. However, I also plan to give examples from something we can call family education or uh, informal education when we do things with our children, when we do things with our grandchildren, and when we learn from each other. So this is something which is characteristic of all of us. And I think that some of these examples might probably be closer and clearer and uh, illustrate some additional aspects of what we are talking about today. And finally, um, as a person coming from the linguistic background, uh, I enjoy metaphors. And I think a metaphor can be something useful uh, to help us understand things. And thinking about metaphors, there can be plenty, of course, Choosing those uh, I wanted to include into this talk, I eventually opted for food. Uh, difficult to say why, probably because I'm a person who actually loves Indian food. So I thought speaking about food during this talk, when I talk to the audience coming from India, would be a good, or at least an interesting thing to do for me. Okay. So if you're still here, if you're still listening and interested in what I'm going to share with you, let's get started and um, see what it is all about. Okay, the first level, actually not the first, I refer to it as level zero. The overall name for that level is that of inspiration. And the main reason for that is that I think that the main motivation of the audience, the main motivation of the person coming to talk to a trees expert or coming to learn something from a trees expert at this level is basically somebody who is after a good story. 
after a good story, metaphorically, of course, you're, you're looking for a new lens. You're not looking for somebody who is a professional in your field. You're not looking for somebody uh, who has the same background, who can share things from your day-to-day -day practice. You are more after something different, something you've never considered, something you've never thought about. So you want to listen to something new in this sense. And the trees expert in this situation is somebody we might refer to as a trees adept or trees guru. So somebody who actually can tell you about this nuance, somebody who brings about a new set uh, of mental models, if we use one of uh, buzzwords of today. So, and this person, uh, and I think that is actually something which happens quite often, very often knows very little about your specific professional context. Let me give you an example. Uh, if we speak about teachers or leaders or parents, when they come to a talk uh, about trees, it's very difficult for them to connect it to their professional activity. So I don't know if there are many teachers among yourselves or many school leaders among yourselves. But if there are, I bet when you've listened to some of my colleagues speak about trees in general, or a particular trees model, like contradiction or uh, laws of system evolution, it probably was pretty difficult for you to connect it to your reality. It probably was very difficult for you to decide how you can use it in day-to-day -day practice. So when somebody speaks about the development of thinking or using a particular theory to help children learn to think better, and I think most of my colleagues could and would speak about trees as something which could help children in schools to learn to think more effectively, it's probably very difficult for you to understand how it can actually happen. You would agree with the idea overall. You might find it interesting. It might be fun to listen to different examples when people did it here and there, but it will probably be fairly difficult to bring it to your specific reality and decide what you as a school head or you as a teacher of math or you as a teacher of English can do tomorrow uh, in your classroom. The same would be true about parents. When somebody tells you that it's a good idea to bring uh, problems to children so the children learn to notice problems and learn to work with problems and learn to work with contradictions, you might agree with it in principle. And you might consider it quite an interesting idea. However, to most of you, it will probably be fairly difficult to decide how to do it, how to do it with your son or daughter, with your grandson or granddaughter. So this is, this is the situation at this zero level. It is very interesting. So we listen to, to specialists, we listen to trees professional. We find the examples fascinating very often. Uh, we agree it is an interesting theory. Uh, however, we do have a problem to bring it to our reality. And if we speak about uh, food metaphor, which I promised, I think a possible food metaphor would be a dish from a three-star Michelin restaurant. So this is something we can be fascinated by. So it can be beautiful to look at. If we happen to actually be at a restaurant, it can be very tasty. However, will we be able to cook it at home? Would you actually consider cooking it at home? Probably not in most situations. So the level zero is that of inspiration. Now, 
what is important to say is that uh, to be at the level zero or to listen to somebody at this level, it doesn't mean that it is worse than any other level. Very often we want a good story. Very often we want to be inspired. And in fact, we are not interested in hearing somebody who is professional in our field. So when I speak about different levels, when I speak about level zero or level one or level two, it does not mean that one level is worse or the other level is better. What I'm trying to describe is actually different encounters, different situations when we communicate to each other and to single out some features of these situations to help us decide what we are actually after. Okay, so that was level zero, that of inspiration. So the next level, the first level, is very different. This is when we actually want something we can use. So we want something we can use tomorrow we can use for our specific problem, which we are facing in our professional life. So we are dealing with a problem, we don't know how to resolve this problem, and we're ready to consider whatever that might work. And uh, to be honest, we don't care if this person is a truth professional or any other professional, as long as this person can share something which might work in our situation. And we do have people like this. We do have people who I refer to as those who solved a problem. In your case, maybe your particular problem. And there are quite a few people associated with the trees community who speak about situations when they apply trees or in fact, in many situations, elements of truth to a particular problem and resolved it and got a solution and the solution works. To give you an example from the field of education, uh, a very simple thing would be if we speak about uh, parent children is when you go to a store and buy a game. So buy a nice game for your child. This game can be fantastic for doing something specific with your children. It can be useful for teaching a particular skill, maybe even a thinking skill or a problem solving skill. And it might work for developing that particular skill. Or in a situation of formal education, we might have a teacher of math coming across a new publication, a new set of materials for using elements of trees in teaching mathematics or using elements of trees for teaching geography or history. That would be a very specific thing. And if you happen to be teaching a particular age group and these materials are specifically for this age group, and if you are open to consider something because you're not happy with how things are going on, you'll probably enjoy. So you will really benefit from a cooperation with somebody who can offer you something for a specific problem which you are facing. Our food metaphor here would be a meal for tonight's dinner, probably from a nearby deli, from a nearby food store. So when you can just go buy your dinner and eat it when you come home or get it delivered. So you're not after a fundamental change. You're not after a new paradigm. So you don't need to be inspired. You don't need to be changing many things. You want something simple that works. And there is a trees expert who is around who can offer you something that works. So this is the situation at the first level. So the level of occasional use. And again, very often when we come to a conference, when we come to a seminar, 
we are not after something fundamental. We want something simple that works. And we want to listen to a presentation. We want to take part in a seminar where we can get this specific something that works in our situation for our problem. The next level is that of a toolbox. Now, toolbox is different uh, than occasional use because here we have a person who is not after a solution to a specific problem. Here we're speaking about a person who actually wants to change the approach to doing things. Here we have somebody who is not happy with how they are solving their problem, with how they're doing whatever they're doing in their field. So they want to change it and they need somebody who can help them change things. And this situation, in my opinion, is fundamentally different from the first two. Because here we need a professional in our field. It's very difficult to uh, change the approach when the person who is our mentor, where the person who is actually sharing how we could change our approach, is not a professional in our field. We need somebody who is not only a trees expert. It must be both the trees expert and the expert in the field. So the expert in X, and this X must be the same X where we come from. Let me give you an example. Uh, again, uh, if we take a person who is professional in the field of education, this person can be uh, very open and can be happy to listen to many presentations of trees professionals telling them about trees. However, if these trees professionals do not know much about education, I'm sorry to say this, but our recommendations and advice would very often sound banal. So the things we often repeat in trees community about education are very well known in education and have existed in education for a very long time. There is nothing new about it. So when we speak about the so-called trees pedagogy. So trees pedagogy by itself very often doesn't bring many things in education to somebody who knows a lot about education. So it sounds very new to those who don't know much. And unfortunately, very often, us as trees experts we, and not experts in education, it might also be the case. And this will be the case about any other field. So we seem to be bringing innovation to the field we don't know much about, and what we're speaking about does not really sound innovative to people who are professional in the field. So if we really after the innovation in a particular field, we must ensure that we actually know something about this field. Now, let me give you an example. So if we speak, for example, about changes in the new curriculum, and this is something which is characteristic of really many countries nowadays, then uh, both school leaders and teachers, they want to learn how to implement this curriculum more effectively. New curricula in most countries speaks about, uh, sp speak about things which are very much in line with the philosophy of trees in education. So they speak about the development of thinking skills, they speak about the uh, development of problem solving skills and creativity and multimodal thinking, all those things which are very much in line with trees philosophy. However, at the same time, it is not clear how to do these things in a systemic way within the system of school education. So if we can have a trees expert coming up with a toolbox that helps us see how we can actually build or rather implement this new curriculum in such a way that it works effectively, this is where we can get a toolbox. And for this, we need, as I say, a trees professional and the professional in the field of education. 
Or, for example, if we have a particular thing which we want to do in the context of family education. For example, we want to develop thinking skills of our children, thinking skills of our grandchildren, or we want to teach a, a new language to our children, and we don't know how to do it. So we need a toolbox. So we know what we want, we don't know how we want to reach it, or we have an idea how to reach it, but we see that it's not working very well. That's where we need the expert with a toolbox. Metaphorically speaking, here we basically need a cookbook. So we are no longer interested in dinner tonight. We want to have something which we can use on a regular basis and get a consistent result. So something where the result is consistent. So where we can actually provide certain level of quality. So this is this third situation of collaboration and third type of trees expert we might be interested in. And finally, level three. Again, a very different level. I call it the level of the theory. So here we're actually looking for somebody who doesn't provide tools. This is the person who makes tools. So the person who makes tools and uh, the person who uh, actually is looking for a completely new paradigm of doing things. So if we take again the situation of a new curriculum, which is already given to us, like it was at the previous level, and our task is to implement this new curriculum, now we are more in a situation of writing a new curriculum. How we can actually write the new curriculum for a new purpose. So what do we need for that? What kind of expert are we looking for? So here we're speaking about trees as a roadmap for reconceptualizing your field. So looking for a person who actually makes theories about how to solve problems. So it's, it's a higher level of reflection. So it's not only somebody who uh, develops toolboxes in a particular field. It's somebody who develops toolboxes for developing toolboxes. Do you see what I mean? I'm going to say it again. Somebody who can step back and tell you about how to develop a toolbox for developing toolboxes. We, in my opinion, are not that often interested in this kind of person. I think that uh, the number of people interested in this kind of trees expert, or in a more general sense, this kind of expert is not that high. It's actually tiny. Because again, uh, if we speak about real situations when these kind of things happen, uh, we basically speak about a completely different paradigm, as I said. For example, how many school leaders nowadays, how many school leaders, if we have some in the audience, are interested in building a school that doesn't have lessons as a main unit of planning? Uh, planning. So if we want to build a school where learning is organized not around lessons, but around something else, then probably we need a completely different approach to building the curriculum. So if we want to teach a new language to a child by using this language inside the family, not by inviting a teacher, not by sending a person to a particular course or using different online courses, but by embedding this language into the culture of our family, it's a completely different approach to doing things. So it's a new paradigm to how we approach things. So, and here again, we need a new kind of uh, tool, a new kind of uh, thing even behind the tools. So in this case, we basically want to become chefs. 
So we want to create new recipes, new recipes for different dishes. This is our interest. So it's not any longer about using a cookbook, a cookbook. it's about writing a cookbook. And this is different. Okay, let me summarize it a little bit. Let me give you another example. And uh, again, it's always easier, you know, to give an example of yourself. So I'm going to give an example of myself and illustrate that these four different levels, they're not really about some people being at one level and some people being smarter and some other people being at another level and, uh, you know, being more primitive. It's more about four different situations. So I'm going to give you examples of myself uh, addressing people from all these four different levels. So level zero or, 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 the, or that of inspiration, I think that the most typical uh, situation when that was characteristic of me uh, as a trees professional was quite a long time ago at the beginning of 90s and mid 90s when I actually taught trees quite a lot, uh, being a teenager first, a little bit older later on. So I actually started teaching trees uh, when I was 16, first as an assistant teacher uh, uh, at the seminars of one of the person who taught trees to me. And I actually benefited from learning trees from many different trees masters. And that particular person, that's Yuli Moroshkovsky, who is also based in Latvia. And I, I was an assistant at quite a few of his seminars uh, during 1990s. Um, and later on, uh, still being, still finishing uh, uh, upper secondary school in Latvia, I started teaching trees um, in another school. Now, I was very enthusiastic about trees as a theory. I believed I knew a lot about trees as a theory. And uh, I was very much in the position which I refer to as a trees guru. So I was really preaching uh, uh, about the theory. So I was ready to talk to it all the time and give different examples from different fields, etc. Actually, the photo, which you can see, it's a picture taken, uh, I think, in 1991 uh, in a place which is very famous, uh, very important, actually, in the history of trees. This is Petrozavodsk during one of uh, infamous Petrozavodsk conferences uh, when we were brought as children. I think I'm 14 at this picture. And uh, two of us from Riga and two... Uh, other people from St. Petersburg. And this is this generation of people who started learning trees when we were children. And uh, again, if I speak about features of this encounter, we have these trees experts who are very enthusiastic, who ideally know quite a lot about trees, although I must admit that I don't think that I knew that much and I was that much of a professional back in 1991 although uh, 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 I had had about two years of regular trees practice back then. <coughs> At the same time uh, I was not a professional in any field so I was still uh, a teenager. I didn't really have any fundamental background knowledge in any of the fields. So I couldn't really show how trees works in any of the fields. So if we move on and speak about the next level, so the first level, the level of occasional use, that's a bit later. That's another picture of me. Uh, I think it's 2001. So the beginning of 2000, is a time uh, when I regularly ran courses for children. So first we started doing it around Latvia uh, and then more internationally. I worked mainly with language teachers and uh, spoke about something uh, which I started developing back then and uh, have been developing since that time. This is called the thinking approach to language teaching and learning. 
but the courses when you come to reflect uh, about them from my current position were mainly about providing language teachers with different recipes so there were many things teachers could take and bring to their classroom and that's what they did they brought these things to their classroom they enjoyed the courses uh, they seemed useful we had lots of positive feedback many teachers were using things but then it was obvious after some time that this does not change anything those teachers who used things which were shared with them and these things were based on trees and i could show how they were based on trees but when they brought them to the classroom very few things change in their classroom and when you come to think about it it's actually clear that teachers did not need trees nor did they actually need any anything behind what i call the thinking approach they just needed specific things for solving their specific problems sometimes those things were connected with increasing motivation of the students sometimes they were more about bringing a different type of tasks so they needed ready to use materials they didn't need any trees professional in fact a funny thing is they didn't even need a professional in the field and this is this characteristic of this level one so we need a recipe that works but the person who is sharing the recipe with us does not need to be a professional chef as long as we like the recipe and the recipe works so if at level zero ideally we need somebody who actually is a professional or at least knows much more than we do then at level one no that's not necessarily something we need to have the next situation again another 10 years later so around 2010 i already got my phd in the development of thinking skills and language education so i'm sort of certified specialist in the field so i know how to do things so i've got a couple of papers published about thinking approach numerous conferences numerous seminars so i speak more about the approach i speak more about the toolbox and i'm more interested in helping teachers change their approach to doing things so here teachers must a tool for redesigning their learning so we no longer speak about a particular recipe which teachers bring to their classroom we are speaking about a different approach to teaching a language or teaching another subject because starting from around 2000 uh 10 we've been working with teachers of different disciplines not only language teachers how we can actually teach a discipline in a different way how can we design our learning units in such a way so that we develop both subject matter and thinking skills in an integrated way this is something um uh, i was interested in this is something which i started doing and uh have been doing since then coming to level three that of a theory here we're speaking about a fundamentally different approach to organizing learning to organizing learning again at different levels both at the level of classroom but not only the classroom it can be the level of the school the level of the country so when we're rebuilding the system of education so we're speaking about me working as an international expert for uh, UNICEF, UNDP, World Bank, coming to work with ministries of education in different countries and looking at how the curriculum can be built if we want to develop different sets of skills in an integrated way. So here we need, again, a, a different type of expertise. So I can't actually do it if I'm just an expert in trees. It doesn't matter how much I know about trees. If I don't know how to build the curriculum, if I've never been to the classroom, 
If I don't know how people learn, I just can't do it. It will not work. So I need to be an expert in models, both in the field and in trees. That's essential when we speak about uh, these, this level of expertise. So this kind of communication. So a nice story, isn't it? So a nice story of me going from level zero, from uh, level zero to level three. The reality is different though. So things don't happen in this chronological way. In a sense, like we don't go from COVID to post COVID. So we don't go from level zero to level three. So all these three levels, they exist simultaneously. And I think all of us in different situations, me including, address people from all these levels. Even now, I sometimes speak at level zero as a trees guru telling somebody about the advantages of trees as a theory. I might be talking to a particular language teacher, showing them recipes of how they can do things, or talking to a mother or a father and giving them a recipe on how they can do things in the family. And I can be speaking to the Minister of Education at a completely different level, discussing the reform in their country. So the point is different. What we need is that there is a coordination between what we are saying, what I'm saying, and what you're interested in. It is important that I'm not giving a recipe to somebody who is after a toolbox and vice versa. I'm not giving a toolbox to somebody who just wants to be inspired. So let me summarize what uh, I wanted to say and what I would like to propose to you. So what you are interested in and what or who rather you would like to be talking to. Now, the first situation is when you are interested in new mental models or a new lens for looking at things in general, not in a particular situation. And then you just need somebody who is more competent than you are in trees models because this new lens would be trees models. So the more competent you are in trees, the more competent you want the person on the other side of the screen to be. That's the situation. So otherwise you just can't be inspired. This is level zero. Level one, when we want a solution to a particular problem, to a particular specific problem in our field, we want an experienced user. We want somebody who has solved this problem and can share the recipe. And this person, as I said earlier, does not necessarily need to be an expert in the trees. As simple as that. Toolbox for solving problems. And here we come to a completely different stage. So here we need somebody who can think with us, who can actually understand what kind of problems we deal with in our field, uh, who is a professional in our field, and who has developed a different approach to dealing with problems in our field. So we look for somebody who is competent in trees and in X. This person should be the author and the experienced user of the toolbox. Sorry, either the author or the experienced user of the toolbox. Ideally, maybe the author, but if this person is the experienced user, it's actually okay. And finally, if you look for a new paradigm, if you actually want a completely different approach in your field, then you have the highest requirements to the trees expert. So in addition to being an expert, in trees, so a person being competent in trees models, you want this person to have a list of achievements in the field. And this is something which I very much recommend that you try to verify what, what this person has achieved. Now this should be very tangible actually. 
And uh, the message, if I summarize maybe in one sentence what I wanted to say in this talk, and something which we often underestimate, is that the competence in X, when you talk to an expert, can be as important as their competence in trees. So that's what I wanted to invite you to reflect upon. So that the framework, I'm very much looking forward to your questions, your opinion, your comments. Let's see. Let's see if you agree, uh, disagree, if you see some gaps where you want to add things. So let's have a conversation about it.